Hey y'all, today we are making some chocolate sourdough bread. Okay, so for all of y'all that are on this sourdough journey with me, y'all are going to love this one, okay? So what you're going to need is some sourdough discard. We're not using an active starter for this. We're going to use our discard. I like to let mine sit out and come up to room temp before I use it because it just makes it a lot easier to work with. For me, I know everybody's like the thickness of their stuff is different a lot of times, but for me, my uh, discard is thick, especially once it gets cold. So I like to let it come to room temp so it's a lot easier to work with and it's not quite so sticky. So we're going to measure out 100 grams of our discard and then 360 grams of warm water. Now the water is about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'm clarifying Fahrenheit because somebody asked on my um, other video, did I mean Celsius or Fahrenheit? And I just realized I had never clarified that. So I know that I have some people that are not from the U.S. that watch. So just, I will try to do my best to remember to clarify that from now on. But I always measure in Fahrenheit. But I'll still try to remember to say it. Just, just so there's not any confusion. Okay. So 100 grams of discard, 360 grams of 90 degree Fahrenheit water. Then we're going to mix this up. I'm using my Danish dough whisk. I've had this thing for about a year. Well, probably since I started doing sourdough, even before I ever posted videos last year. I love this thing. If you don't have one and you're making sourdough a lot, I highly recommend you get one and a scale. <laughs> because your stuff is just gonna come out so much more accurate and better, in my opinion, if you have a scale. And they're not expensive, they're super cheap on Amazon. You can get one for like less than 10 bucks. So anyway, once we get our starter and our, our discard and our water mixed up, you wanna mix it up till it's kind of bubbly and milky looking. Then we're going to add our dry ingredients. I'm adding 450 grams of bread flour. Now you can use uh, unbleached all-purpose flour if that's what you have. If you don't have bread flour, either one will work. I just prefer bread flour, so that's what I use. So measure you out or weigh out 450 grams of your flour. And then we're going to add in some sugar because, you know, we don't want bitter chocolate. We want some sweet chocolate. So we're going to measure out 40 grams of just plain white sugar. Okay. And this recipe, I'm going to tell y'all all the measurements and I'll also put them down in the description block box like I always do. But this is not my recipe. This came from a friend of mine and she um, found it on a website I think she said but she has a TikTok and if I can figure out how to link her TikTok in my description box I will do that but that's where I got this recipe from and I was like if now somebody I know made it and said it's good I have to try it so that's where this came from so what I'm adding now is 30 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder and then we're going to add in 10 grams of salt and then we're going to add in seven grams of instant yeast. Now that's just like the um, quick rise yeast. And we're adding that because I know some of y'all are like, well, it's sourdough. Isn't it supposed to make its own yeast? Yes, it does. And it has yeast in it. But because it's not an active starter, we're using the, like the sleepy starter. We're going to add a little bit of this instant yeast just to give it a kick. Just to give it a little help rising. Okay. So 10 grams of salt, seven grams of instant yeast, okay? And we're just measuring all this out. And we're gonna add chocolate chips, but I like to mix it up just a little bit first to kind of start it going. So I'm not breaking up and mangling my chocolate chips. Does that make sense? So I just give it a little bit of a start and then I'm gonna add my chocolate chips. And I'm gonna add in about 100 grams of milk chocolate chips. Now you can use um, semi-sweet, you can use dark chocolate if you want to, but I will tell you this bread, I'm telling you is delicious, but it's not super sweet, okay? So if you're expecting that this is gonna be like cake sweet, it's not, but it is delicious. I'm, 
you're going to have to trust me on this one if you've never trusted me before. <laughs> if you've been with me long enough, I know you trust me by now. If you're if you're on this sourdough journey, you need to make this chocolate sourdough bread. It is so good. I got up the morning after I made it and popped a piece in the toaster and toasted it just a little bit, you know, kind of get those chocolate chips melting and then put a little butter on it. Y'all, mm-mm. I wasn't good for nothing the whole rest of the day. Y'all got to make this. So, anywho, <laughs> I mixed it up real good as much as I could with my dough whisk. And then I just kind of got in there with my hand just to make sure all the flour was incorporated. I didn't want any streaks of just loose white flour. So, once we get it all mixed up, I'm going to cover this with, this is just like one of those plastic bowl covers. And we're going to let this rise for an hour or two or until it doubles in size. Now, something you need to know about my kitchen is it's like a morgue in there, okay? My house is cold. It's always cold. I don't like to be hot. <laughs> so, I have to work a little harder to get things to rise in my kitchen. Um, you can take your dough and sit it in your oven. with. A, don't turn the oven on, but just have the oven light on. And don't put your bowl directly by the light. But that will sometimes help it warm up enough to rise. But I should have let mine rise a little bit longer, but I was ready to eat this, y'all. <laughs> I was ready to try this, so I was just going fast. And it's fine, but I think I could have got a bigger rise if I would have just let it go a little longer. But an hour or two, or until it doubles, is what you need. So we're not making this in a... Um, like in our Dutch oven, like an artisan loaf of bread. We're going to make this into like a bread loaf, like a, like a white bread loaf, okay? So I buttered up my pan. You can use cooking spray if you want to. Butter up your pan, spray your pan, whatever you're going to do. And then we're going to turn our dough out onto this floured surface. Make sure that you put some flour down because she's sticky, y'all, okay? She's good, and it won't, like, stick all over you. It's not that kind of sticky, but it's still sticky, okay? So make sure that you flour your surface, and then we're just going to let this come right on out of our bowl. And I had a little bit that was left behind there, so I'm just going to kind of take my little bowl scraper there and just add that right to the pile. No chocolate bread dough left behind, right? So... Then we're going to put a little bit more flour on top so we can work with it. And then we're just going to spread this out. You don't need to like overwork it. You don't need to roll it out. Nothing like that. But um, just kind of get it into as much of a rectangle as you can. And look, if y'all are liking these sourdough recipes, if you like sourdough recipes, I've started a playlist. It's kind of small right now because I'm just kind of getting back into it. But I have... Um, how to make a starter and how to make a regular loaf, you know, like the artisan, the fancy circle, you know, round loaf and some cheese crackers. And, the, you know, we're going to be adding all kinds of things, but I will link that playlist up above and down below for y'all if y'all need that. And keep in mind that everybody's recipes are different. Not everything works for everybody and everybody's stuff is different. So, follow mine but if it doesn't work for you find another recipe to follow you know what i mean like it's gonna work if you keep at it but do what's easiest for you and what works for you that's the best way you know so i rolled up the dough and the dough is so soft y'all that it keeps popping my chocolate chips out so i rolled it into sort of a loaf shape and then I'm just going to kind of pull on it a little bit, push on it. I'm tucking those ends, kind of sealing the ends down. And then I'm just making sure that the seams are all good and put together. And then I'm going to, you know, just kind of pull it a little bit just to kind of tighten the top of the dough up. Okay. So we're going to put this into our buttered pan. And then I let mine rise again because I didn't let it rise a whole, whole lot the first time. I let it sit there for about another 30 minutes or so, okay? I just covered it with the same little piece of plastic, and I let it go for about another 30 minutes. Again, I could have gone 45 minutes or an hour, but see it? See how big it got just from sitting there 30 minutes? See, it just rose up above the top of the pan. But again, I was ready to cook. So make sure that your oven is preheated to 350. I didn't say that. And then I just put a little bit of melted butter on top of mine. You don't have to do that. That's completely optional. But I thought, you know, a little butter on the top can't hurt, right? So anywho, 
in the oven. Mine took an hour, okay? It's going to look ready after about 30 minutes. This is where I would highly suggest another tool is some sort of something you can take the temperature of this bread with. My bread looked ready after 30 minutes, 30, 35 minutes. It was not. If I had taken it out when I thought it was ready, the bread would not have been good. It would have been gummy in the center and we wouldn't have been able to eat it. I would have had to throw it away. So highly, highly recommend that you get something where you can take the internal temperature of your loaf and it needs to be about 200 degrees. That's when you know your bread is done. And that works for these loaves. It works for the round fancy loaves. 200 degrees is where your bread needs to be for it to be done. But look at this bread, y'all. It is so soft, just squishy, springs right back out. It's just as soft as, a, as like a plain loaf of white bread that you get at the grocery store super soft and y'all it is so dang good i'm telling you you've got to try this even if you're not on the sourdough train go find my video how to make starter start you a starter and start making some of these recipes because you are gonna love them they're so good and they're better for you than regular bread they really are but that is all i have for y'all today and i will catch y'all on the next one bye y'all